Loading. Hey, everybody. Happy Monday. If you're watching this on a replay, let me know. Put in the comments, hashtag replay. Love to see who comes back and watches after the fact. Okay, getting everything situated. As you pop on, tell me hi, tell me what you're working on. If you're from out of town, tell me where you are. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Holly. Hello, Stacy. I was hoping to get on a couple minutes early, but Melissa and I got busy chatting about all kinds of things, and all of a sudden, it's 7 o'clock, but you all don't mind, I know. Hi, Diane. I hope everybody had a good weekend. Um, the weather around here was beautiful. I know those, like there was a whole stream of thunderstorms that came through, but we hardly got any of it in Saginaw. That valley, it just kind of, everything splits and goes around us. Um, it was so nice to have the windows open. We went up to the campground and um, what would you say? Unwinterized, <laughs> opened up the camper. And it's, it's just nice to think spring is maybe right around the corner. <laughs> Julie, yes, the shawl does look good behind me. I know. Oh my gosh, you guys are saying hi too fast. <laughs> I love it. Josie, Shar, Marcina, Sherry, Nicole, Brianna, Malcolm, Julie, Linda, Terry. Oh my gosh, we had all kinds of people today. Terry's working on her slipping sideways. Awesome. I just messed myself up. There we go. Hi, Cindy. Michelle. Lisa crocheting scrubbies. I. <laughs> Melissa's uh, trying to show me something on her. <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to talk about that. My wall is naked, yes. <laughs> Lisa, I love your scrubbies. That's where I was with that. They they are so they are so handy. The perfect little balance of things. I I just wish maybe the next time you're in, bring some and I will buy some from you because I can't handle I can't handle naked most things. <laughs> Um, I'm not even wearing anything today. We did, um, we did a photo shoot today. The shawls did, and I did, and Jill did. Um, yeah, we'll talk about that, I guess, in a minute. Maybe I should officially get started, huh? <laughs> Welcome to Monday Motivation. Today is Monday, April 25th. My name is Kristen. I'm the owner of The Little Yarn Shop located in downtown Saginaw, Michigan. Um, shop hours are Wednesday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. This Saturday, our hours are 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. because we wanna make sure everybody has an opportunity to get into the shop and see all the cool things. <laughs> yeah, the hair downs, the hair's not down very often, especially in here, it, as cool as it is, once I get on and start talking to all of you, I, I warm up right away. Plus I have knitting on our lap. Man, spending time with mom, which is good. That's a good thing. Um, so let's chat a little bit about LYS Day since I mentioned it. For those of you that don't know, this Saturday, the 30th of April is local yarn store day. LYS day for short. So I kind of think it's Little Yarn Shop Day because obviously that's what it's for. Yeah. My yarn got caught around my little bag here. 
So what's going to be happening? All kinds of stuff. I will have some giveaways for the first, I don't know how many people, I think it's like 25. Um, I have giveaways for the first 25 customers or yeah, sales with the sales. Um, the yarn from Dream in Color for the Casa Pinka kits and for the, um, there's another one I haven't talked a whole lot about yet. And it's called Vesuvio's Crafts. Um, it's a guy who's designing a big long wrap. Um, I just don't have any actual pictures of it yet. I ordered kind of blindly on that one. Joyce finished Sock Madness. Too early in the morning o'clock. Awesome. Um, is anybody else that's on doing Sock Madness? I know Joyce is. Um, Joan, I think Joan's not doing it this year. Vicki, I think. I don't know. Looks like they dialed it back a little bit. <laughs> Malcolm asked if people are camping out to get the goodies. I don't think I'm, I'm not up there with the Apple Store and Best Buy quite yet. <laughs> Karen swears that while I'm gone, that she comes into the shop and there are people lined up outside the door, but I have, I have yet to have that happen. So, but I'd love it if they were. But we have all day, I'll have lots of yarn. Um, so the Casa Pinka shawl this year is, should have the weather. Yes, although we had warm weather this weekend, Jackie, it just disappeared. I can officially show you what this looks like now. I mean, I did a little bit last week, but it's actually on Ravelry now. The info is about the Rick Rack shawl. So it's a two skein, two color shawl. Um, hers is very high contrast. Mine is not. Of course, why would I not be in the middle of a row while I'm doing this? Oh, see, now, now that I have more done, you can really see the difference in the colors. So I'm using two obviously very um, similar colors. One is this tonal gray. The other is my Saginaw sock yarn. I was really hoping this is what it would do, that as the rows grew, you would see more of that contrast. You get those little blips of color in there. I love it. So it just takes um, one skein each of two colors. I will have um, I will have sets of the colors I'm using. I also will have sets um, I posted in the event page. If you've not done that, if you've not either said that you're interested or going to the event that I have um, set up for LYS Day, um, you should go in and do that. I've been trying to post little snippets of colors of yarn and different patterns. Um, so Dreaming Color has four different color groupings that they've put together for theirs. One of the things I would recommend is that there are quite a few yarn stores that were able to get a preview copy and have put their, um, have put their patterns on Ravelry. So if you go into projects, you can see kind of what other people did with color combinations, see if there's something that really speaks to you or something you know you thought you would like, but you see it together and you don't like the way it looks. You know, I'm always ready and willing to help you pick out colors in the shop here too. So her pattern, um, I'm not sure how much it will be once it's on its own, but if you buy the two stains of yarn required for her pattern, I will have um, discount codes for you to download it for free. The same goes for the shawl by, um, I think her name's Jessica of Double the Stitches. She has a shawl called the Coteri shawl. Diane, poor Diane was trying to explain to me last week when we were chatting that I had a picture of a yellow shawl in a cluster of photos and neither one of us could remember what it was or where it was. Um, and it wasn't until somebody came in later in the day and asked, oh, pattern says $7, okay. Um, 
somebody came in later in the day and asked about that specific shawl also. Um, so it is a beautiful, it's a gold, but doesn't have to be gold, obviously. We finally figured it out. I sent out an email about LYS Day and it was in the email. So <laughs> figured that out. Um, so that takes two skeins of fingering weight yarn, same color. This one would lend itself more to um, a tonal or a semi-solid with a beautiful lace. You wanna make sure that all that hard work is visible to everybody. <laughs> hi, Aunt Jackie. I'll say hi for my mom too, because I think mom and dad are back out to dinner with Denny today. Um, that's another free with purchase. Earth Yarns has, um, has put together four different patterns, two are knit and two are crochet. Um, I gave Melissa just two of them to, um, to post about. The scrappy one was just because I thought it was cool, but they have um, a unisex scarf and a cowl that are knit patterns that are free with purchase of the yarn. And they're not all fingering weight. So some are worsted, some are DK. Um, the two crochet ones, I believe, are fingering weight. Um, the baklava cowl is a two color fingering weight crochet cowl. And it is so cool looking. Um, I, I really hope some of the crocheters out there um, pick that out and and run with it because I think it just would be a gorgeous in um, a wide variety of colors. When I was looking through the stuff for Earth today, I saw they had um, they had a project. Well, they released a couple patterns for um, Earth Day. Earth, um, obviously, they're very they're very nature conscious. Is that the way to put it? Eco-friendly? Maybe that's a better way to put it. If you've ever bought yarn from them on their tag, you'll see that for every skein of yarn you buy, um, they plant a tree, or at least every skein of yarn I buy. For a while, we, they would put a card in my box that says, you know, it's so many trees have been planted with your order. Um, but they do celebrate Earth Day, and they released a few patterns that are just to use up scraps to make things. Um, some of them were kind of like they had a cell phone holder and a couple little things like that, but they had a scrunchie pattern, um, which I think would be fun to do with scraps or just with, you know, any, they show it in a self-striping yarn, which I think is fun. I haven't tried it yet, but I think it kind of looks like the donuts that Sarah was knitting, <laughs> only with a scrunchie holder in there. So maybe not too difficult. So all of that will be going on on Saturday. I know there are more things. I wrote them down, but I can't, I don't know where I wrote them down. I wrote them down somewhere. Oh, we need to talk about that and that. So let's talk about this. And I was going to be wearing mine today, but it's, it's warm in here. So like I said, I had it on. We, um, we did a photo shoot, which was really fun. We went, um, I met Jill here, who is the designer, and she has, um, a friend of hers is the photographer for um, pretty much all the patterns that Jill releases. And I got to meet her. She and, um, she and her partner own, in addition to her being a photographer, and I'm sure just having life, um, they own Harless and Hugh and the public house in Bay City. So I think that's cool. And I'm sure, I'm sure we've, Victoria and I have seen them there when we've been there on, on our Sunday treks out. But um, I'm going to show, I'll show it to you kind of overall, but Jill really wanted to wait until Wednesday, I think, to, to show the whole big spread all laid out. But I'll back up a little bit because it is kind of big. And I blocked it. And 
Hi, Lisa. And if you could see in one of the things I really like is look at, sorry. <laughs> I just tried to show my microphone instead of my camera. There's just a little bit of variation in there. It's got that little bit of a tonal look. Um, so Julie knit um, this one that is kit C. The one that I have is kit A. The one that Jill has been posting is kit B. Um, we did finally settle on um, a max number of kits that we're doing and we are kind of getting close to that. So if you have not pre-ordered your kit yet, um, I have samples of each one back here. If you wanna stop in the shop and see the colors in person, of course, I've got the two shawls knit up as well. Mm. Sorry, you guys, my throat is very dry. The blowers are on high in here. So I'm really happy with how the wraps turned out. Jill is too, and it was really interesting to be part of the design process. Um, it was it was a lot of fun to kind of see how her brain works, and everything was condensed to a very a very short amount of time, but that's okay. So the first. Um, the first 45 orders, and you would have seen it when you placed your order online um, because I had changed the description, but the first 45 orders were guaranteed to be ready for pickup here on Saturday. And all of the kits, we've shifted things around a little bit. So all of the kits, whether you ordered by April 4th or order now until we hit our cap, we'll get the local goodies in with them. At least some of them until I run out. I wanna, I wanna make sure that I get as many in as I can. So the yarn is locally dyed, the designer is local. And I will have a little collection of a treat and some locally made or locally themed things. It's, it's pretty exciting. It's all starting to come together now, and which is good because we're just four days away. Um, oh, I did have a note to myself. And if you look on the project page for the Rick Rack shawl for the Casapinka one, you'll see that some people used mini stains or um, gradients. If you like the colors in one of the kits, but aren't necessarily crazy about the pattern design. If you don't, um, I had a couple ladies in the other day who really love the asymmetrical crescent style. They don't like the rectangular ones so much. This would be really fun to do with one of those kits. You would have plenty of yarn to do it. You could probably make it bigger if you wanted to. Um, just another idea. So don't, don't box yourself into thinking you don't want the kit just because you don't like the pattern that goes with it. You guys know, I can always help you find a different pattern, but I think this one would be fun. That's all the notes I have about Saturday. There will be, um, there will not be open knitting here in the shop on Saturday. I anticipate it's gonna be a little bit busy and we will not be able to wind yarn in the shop on Saturday. Karen has suge suggested that Melissa has volunteered to wind yarn out in the lobby. <laughs> um, we may or may not do that. Julie, she hasn't come up with, she hasn't come up with uh, the final name. We chatted about it a little bit today. Um, and I don't know. I don't think I don't think we came to any conclusion when she was here. You will when you're here. Good. Uh, so no open knitting in the shop. However, there are other spaces, like I mentioned, the lobby up front. 
there are huge windows up there. It's great for knitting. Uh, that's where Deb does her Monday night drop-in classes. The girls are up there now. Um, but I'm hoping it's busy in a good way and that it's all day long. So in all of that, I also showed what I'm working on and what I finished. What is new? So new to the shop, I kind of showed it off. And I mentioned it last week. Now I actually have one to show are the maker's boards. So it doesn't look like, looks pretty unassuming here. But you guys, first of all, this is a, this is a nine page pattern and it's, it's staying in place with that magnet. These boards have good magnets that go with them. Look at that. It comes with not the stitch markers, but these four little round magnets, this really strong bar one, these two, and then these two little guys over here. All the cocoa knit stitch markers are metal, so they stick to things. I did just get um, a bunch of the tiny, the small round stitch markers. They're so smooth. You get so many in a pack. But so the board closes up. It actually stays closed because of the magnets also. All three panels have metal in them. So you could really use any, any of the surfaces. Is it this way or that way? They are they're really nice. The material is, um, it's the same as a lot of their other utility pieces, I guess I would say. Um, it's a fabric that's designed to wear like leather. It's, it's washable. You can put it in the washing machine and it'll get a little bit wrinkly and a little bit soft as you, as you use it. So these are the maker's boards. I did order sets of additional little colorful magnets to go with them. Oh, look at how cute those are. It's, you know, we can never have enough magnets on anything. The boards, um, it looks like they didn't all sell out over the weekend. I see a couple over there. They are $36 a piece. If it's something that you see that you want, you can always put a note in the comments, tell me that you want one, whether you're gonna pick it up or you want me to ship it to you. And we will keep track of all that. I love them. This one might go home with me. They're nice and they're nice and thin too, not very bulky. So from Coco Knits, I I got another shipment of their little round, their split markers, I guess you call them. Let me find one that's a different color. So they have these little split rings. I know it wants to focus on me and not on that, but. The way these are designed though, crocheters really like these because you don't have to lock and unlock them, but the shape of them is just enough that when you hook it in your knitting, it stays in place. We probably talked about this before, but I love these for counting when I'm casting out a bunch of stitches, pop one in there every 10 or every 25. It keeps things easy. And they're solid round ones. We got more of those. And the little tiny, these little tiny ones. I think it's like 24 of them. Oh, 60. Six colors, 10 each. So you get 60 markers in here. That'll last you a little while. But the really small ones, they're sturdy. They're not gonna break because they're not um, plastic. They're not rubber, so they won't wear out. And they really don't take up a whole lot of space in your projects. If you wanna go all out, for those of you that um, need to have all the things, the flight of stitch markers is just that. It's a tasting but it's a lot. So you get their split ring markers, their large, medium, and small solid markers, and then their little, of course I can't get one out.
for the little triangle markers. I shouldn't have picked the pink one. There we go. Little triangle markers. These are the same. You get so many. Let's see. It's easier to not read upside down. Five different styles for each of six colors. So 24. Yeah. 24 stitch markers in each one. That's a lot. I have, so those are $24.99. I got another shipment of those. They're so handy to have. That's the new stuff I got in that I can talk about. So the other thing we didn't talk about was this. Look at that spot, a little naked spot over there. I spent a little bit of time last week pulling yarns, rearranging things, um, putting yeah, just moving all kinds of things around. Clearly, I'm not done yet. I still have some things to tidy up. But there are 28 hooks. Well, there should be. By the time I'm done, there should be 28 hooks for 28 new colors of a sport weight yarn. Um, finally, I know I showed this to you all a while ago, but well, in my little knit out box, this thing is just so stinking cute. But, and I can't find my, what happened to my swatch. But you remember the swatch that I showed with this beautiful, beautiful turquoise yarn? That yarn is finally coming to me. So all of the colors are this, I don't know if you would call it a tonal or a semi-solid. I would probably say semi-solid because you do get a little bit of lights and darks in there. You can definitely tell it's hand dyed, um, but just in a in a beautiful, subtle way. So Friday night after the shop closes, the um, the fairies will come in. My little yarn fairies, which is me, um, will come in and put all of that up on the wall. So that's really exciting. Um, I'm curious if any of you have sport weight patterns that you like that would use a semi-solid yarn like that. I have a project in mind. I want to do the vitamin D cardigan. Um, I was looking at it online and I ordered yarn for one specifically for this project for me um, from this dyer. It's an open front cardigan that's really, um, it's meant to be loose and, and kind of wavy in the front. And it looks good on a variety of people, sizes, shapes, tall, short. It really looks cute on a lot of people. That's my plan, but I'm curious to know um, what if any, you all have as either cowls or hats or fingerless mitts or sweaters. There we go, that's, that's the vitamin D pattern Melissa just posted. It's really cute. Of course, it's, I was hoping with sport weight yarn, it would be on bigger needles. <laughs> I don't think it is though. I think I'll probably still end up on a three or a four. That, I don't know if I can, I know I tried this before and I wish that I could show a better photo of how gauge matters so much with shawls. No, it won't let me show it. Um, ooh, that's right. I think that's the one Melissa's gonna do. Dainty lion. Yes. Oh, look, it says it right there in your comments. <laughs> um, gauge, the fact that I have to go down needle sizes all the time, or almost all the time, makes such a difference. Even if you, even if you get gauge on something, the product can look so different. 
in looking at my wrap the way I did it and Julie's the way she knit and she's she's definitely a tight knitter and Julie at some point I keep thinking I'd like if you're interested it, maybe you teach a class on how to knit with the flick style um it's something I would like so instead of throwing her yarn like a lot of people do when they hold their yarn in their right hand there are some knitters that barely move anything she just flicks a little finger back and forth um and I would love for Julie to teach a class on that or just teach me <laughs> um because I do know people that tend to knit English style or throw or flick knit closer to gauge even dropping needle sizes my shawl ended up larger than Julie's before we blocked it before I blocked them I had them laid out next to each other and it was probably a good oh I even had that note somewhere too it was a good five or six inches difference in length and an inch and a half or two inches in width that mine was larger than hers was but I gave them both pads and blocked them all the way out took up my entire spare bedroom bed <laughs> but it was kind of nice that they're rectangular so I could just lay them side by side I really 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 would have benefited from having like four sets of my blocking pins which are phenomenal for straight lines five inch sweep well, that's close to what I said. <laughs> um, they both turned out beautifully. Though. Julie is a beautiful knitter. And I appreciate that she helps me out with things. Um, what else? This week there won't be a whole lot out of the ordinary throughout the week. Um, if <laughs> this is what usually happens, I come in and think it's going to be really quiet because everybody's going to wait and come in on Saturday and then everybody comes in and it's not quiet and I love it either way. So you may see things throughout the week. If you come in, you'll probably see some things being moved around and us making room for stuff. You might get a sneak peek of something here and there. Depends on when you're here and what's going on. But really, we're just we're just gearing up for Saturday. Um, it would be a huge help to me if you would not only um, go to that event and say that you're interested or you're going, but if you share that either on your on your Facebook page in knitting groups that you are a member of um, wherever you can. I just like to get the word out. Um, I appreciate all of you all the time, but every little bit helps. I'm excited too. I, I anticipate it's going to be busy, but I love that. I, I love having a shop full of people. I, I know I say this to you all, but it really just it baffles me, it blows my mind that, that the shop is, is doing more, more than I ever could have hoped that it does between um, making connections, building friendships, just, I've met so many amazing people that I never would have had the chance to encounter if I hadn't had the shop. And I just, I appreciate every one of you. And I hope that you know that. I think, I think that might be all I have for today. It's been a long day. If you're on, well, I guess she's both on Instagram and Facebook. Um, but if you keep your eye out for Nitarella, Jill's post Wednesday, I believe she's going to do the whole release and with a name and we will have some kits left. I hope we'll see. Like I said, it is a limited amount. Um, 
we have less than 20 left, I think, which is, which is not gonna last very long. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> Pretty soon I have to figure out where I'm gonna put all of that yarn when Stephanie, Stephanie delivers it to me because I'm sure it's gonna take up more space than I think it will in my head. All right, I hope everybody has a good week. Try and stay warm. I hope it warms back up again. Um, but come and see me throughout the week. Come and see us on Saturday. Again, exp expanded hours on Saturday, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Oh, Chandra, I was just talking to somebody about that, the Great Gingham Raglan. They were even talking about it in Florida. One of the shops down there was talking about it. It's cute. Um, so again, expanded hours on Saturday, 8, nope, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, there is a chance if you come in early that uh, the doors on the south side of the building where the red awning is may still be locked. If you come in on the north side, either up the stairs where it's nearest to my shop door or through the turnstile, those doors should be open and ready to go. Um, and it's almost time for the farmer's market. I was thinking about that being right outside the door. Um, I think they start Memorial weekend, if not the weekend before that. So that's coming up. I can't believe it. It's almost May already. Um, so I hope everybody has a good week. I hope that your week is uh, creative and productive because what more could we hope for, right? Surrounding ourselves with loved ones being creative, being productive, and just being happy to be alive. Um, so with that, I will see you all if you come into the shop this week or come and see me on Saturday, or I will see you back on here next Monday at seven. All right, everybody have a good night. Bye.